I feel like there's a universal constant for hobbyist communities, a certain inevitability, and that is the eventual development of in-jokes. Yu-Gi-Oh! players have their jokes about pendulum cards, Final Fantasy XIV players have their jokes about Gaius, very clear. and of course, the competitive fighting game community has plenty of them as well. These in-jokes don't always maintain their relevance for very long, especially not in the age of the internet, but one particular in-joke has become pretty evergreen among fighting game players. Comparing just about any competitive game out there to fighting games. The X is a fighting game joke has been used to describe a whole host of games that pretty squarely fit into completely different genres and while it's usually pretty tongue-in-cheek, it can actually sometimes be useful if you're trying to explain a game to other fighting game players. For instance, if someone told you that Gundam Extreme Versus is a fighting game, you might be inclined to believe them, given that the Gundam Versus series doesn't really fit into any established genre. And if you're at all familiar with fighting games on a mechanical level, you're more likely to recognize the game's commonalities with the fighting game genre than you would with the third-person shooter, which the game more superficially resembles. Sometimes the comparison works as long as you suspend your disbelief a little, as tends to be the case with puzzle games like Puyo Puyo or Catherine's Versus Mode, or the PvP modes in action RPGs like Dark Souls or Mega Man Battle Network. Then there's... Look, I've seen people swear up and down that Dichi Mahjong is basically a fighting game, which... Oh, he got Are you kidding me? Nice. No! Uh... I guess. The important thing here is that the designation of fighting game in this context isn't about the game adhering to a specific set of mechanics, rather it's about identifying a particular pattern of common interactions between players in the environment of a competitive game. This pattern of interactions is so prolific and fundamental to the competitive fighting game experience that community members have a word for it. Footsies. Footsies is a pretty extensive topic encompassing a huge number of interrelated skills, but to simplify, the act of playing footsies during a neutral game state is one of attempting to goad your opponent into overextending themselves by making educated guesses as to their intentions while simultaneously masking your own. This kind of gameplay dynamic is hardly peculiar to fighting games, not by a long shot, but what's unique about fighting games is that they arguably portray this gameplay dynamic in the least abstract way of any competitive game genre. After all, the scope of a Street Fighter match is much smaller than that of Dota 2 or even Counter-Strike, each interaction so much more intimate and easily identifiable. And I think it's the fact that there's so little abstraction in the portrayal of this gameplay dynamic that makes fighting game players so primed to recognize similar dynamics in other genres. So, like, what's the point of all this preamble about genre definitions and gameplay dynamics? Well, it sets the groundwork for me to introduce this one specific game I want to talk about. It's called One on One. It's a sports game. A basketball game, to be specific. But it might also be a fighting game? One on One was released exclusively for Japanese PlayStation consoles in November of 1998, developed and published by a company named Jorudan. Now, if you speak any Japanese, that might sound a little bit suspicious, but I'm pretty sure it's just a coincidence. Prior to the release of One on One, Jorudan was known primarily for making obscure budget titles for the Super Famicom and Game Boy systems. A reputation that they would maintain throughout the 2000s, with multiple releases on the PS2 and Nintendo Wii before leaving the games industry behind in 2008 to pivot towards what would become their primary business in 2022. Route Guidance Services for Japanese Public Transit. Huh. As you might expect from a company with such an interesting career trajectory, 
Jorodan made quite a few interesting games, and One on One is definitely one of the most interesting in their catalogue, thanks to its apparent marriage of basketball with early 3D fighting game design sensibilities. Something that just about everyone seems to recognise as the game's most prominent defining feature. Most traditional basketball games focus on emulating basketball as a team sport, from strict simulations like NBA 2K to more arcadey affairs like NBA Jam, each player's control over multiple characters means that the scope of a match is pretty broad. The team dynamic of these games places a pretty large emphasis on your ability to track where each character is and, as a result, forces the player to think about ways of gaining positional advantages that lead to point scoring. This also leads these games to use control schemes that heavily rely on context-sensitive actions. With the focus placed so squarely on the broader scope of a basketball game, these control schemes allow for players to consistently perform reasonable basketball maneuvers as a matter of necessity. This is where one-on-one -on -one predictably differs in a very substantial way. It's in the name, after all. Like its title would suggest, the main mode of gameplay in one-on-one -on -one is one-on-one -on -one street basketball, with two players facing off on a half-court. The game is played best of three rounds, with each round being decided when a player reaches the score limit or when the timer reaches zero. Match flow is pretty stop and start thanks to a very heavy segmentation between offense and defense. Both roles have their own sets of controls and any action that would cause possession of the ball to change causes a complete reset of the game state. The reduction in scope from teams to just one character per side immediately changes the game's priorities. Where traditional basketball games focus on macro decision making, positioning of team members to set up goals and such, One on One focuses more on micro decision making, forcing players to engage with their opponent on a much more intimate level. The mechanics behind cut-ins, steals, and shots are far more granular and require very deliberate usage. This means that most of one-on-one -on -one is actually played up close in a way not too dissimilar from Virtua Fighter, as the offense player tries to slip past their opponent to score points, while the defense player attempts to block their opponent's advances and steal possession of the ball. What would ordinarily compose just a small part of a traditional basketball game ends up becoming almost the entirety of what one-on-one -on -one actually focuses on, and in order to make this singular aspect of basketball sustain basically the whole game, the systems which drive it need to meet a pretty high bar of complexity in order to have any lasting appeal. So let's take a closer look at what one-on-one -on -one is doing. Like I alluded to in the last section, one-on-one -on -one splits players into strict offense and defense roles. On offense, your goal is to shoot hoops to score points. On defense, your goal is to stop the player on offense from doing that by way of stealing the ball. It probably goes without saying that this is not nearly as simple an affair as I am making it out to be. The first way this game earns its credits as a fighting sports game is arguably through its control scheme. For both sides, players can use the square and triangle buttons to perform movements corresponding to each arm, supplemented by circle acting as a dedicated action button. Putting the control scheme somewhere between Virtua Fighter's three button controls and Tekken's superior limb based combat, all with a sports ball twist. For defense, square and triangle are used to lean to the left or right allowing the defense player to block cut-in attempts from the offense player, while the circle button is used to make attempts at stealing the ball. For the offense player, the circle button is used to make shots, which become layups and dunks when close to the hoop, while the square and triangle buttons are used to dribble the ball in the left or right hands, with forward plus E the dribble button used to cut in and make a run for the goal. This is where the first layer of complexity comes in. While the ball is being dribbled, the defense player can only steal the ball while it's mid-air. However, on top of changing which hand they're dribbling with, the offense player can rhythmically tap the dribble button at different tempos to actively change the speed at which they're dribbling the ball, making timing the steal significantly more difficult for the defense player. From here though, 
the defense player can press forward plus circle to charge at the offense player, ignoring their dribble timing and stunning them long enough to guarantee a steal. There's the next fighting game credit. One on one has honest to god combos, and charge into steal is 100% a combo James Chen would be proud of. So, if your opponent can hit you to force the ball out of your hands, it is street ball after all, street rules, man. Then it only makes sense that you can block, which the offense player can do by holding down the L1 button. Blocking both renders the offense player immune to charges and puts the ball out of reach for a steal. What is the defense player to do? Well, That's right, baby, there are throws in this game. The defense player can just straight up scoop their opponent and take the ball with them by pressing triangle and circle at the same time. There's fighting game credit number three, fucking strike throw mix up in a basketball game. Of course, the offense player is vulnerable to throws at all points we've just described, but they do have an answer to it. By pressing forward while blocking, they can enter a universal back turn stance which the game refers to as push. Pushing allows the offense player to move forward with the ball while making themselves unaffected by both charges and throws. The downside, however, is that this once again leaves them wide open to steals, on top of having a significantly limited number of actions they can take while pushing, often none at all outside of just turning around again. Of course, the game isn't decided purely by possession of the ball. Since the game starts from the three-point line, the offense player can elect to just take the shot as opposed to trying to make a run for the goal, in which case they have to line up the power and control meters with the red lines if they want nothing but net. It's important to remember though that the offense player's accuracy isn't the only enemy here. The defense player can steal the ball mid-shot by jumping. Just like in fighting games, jumping is quite a commitment, and the offense player is able to take advantage of that by pressing the cross button to cancel their shot, making for a fake out. All of this is possible after offense has made a run for the goal as well, with defense able to steal the ball off attempted layups and dunks, while offense is able to use a few tricks to get the ball past the opponent and into the hoop. But here's where we get to the last and probably biggest fighting game credit we can give to one on one. Those tricks aren't universal. One-on-one -on -one does a lot to ensure that the experience it provides is complex enough to last longer than a few minutes, but it's not content to let that complexity lie exclusively with its systems. Instead, the game deepens the experience further by giving players a wide selection of characters to choose from, all lovingly brought to life by Takehiko Inoue. You know, the guy that made Slam Dunk, the original basketball shonen serial that ran the scene before Kuroko no Basuke popularized the fadeaway jumper. But this isn't your ordinary basketball player selection either. While most basketball games are content to differentiate characters by vaguely defined stats relating to three-pointer accuracy or whatever, one-on-one -on -one gives each character their own unique move list, allowing for a broad range of gameplay priorities between different members of the cast. These are whole-ass fighting game characters, dude. The command lists even look like the command lists you'd find in the pause menus of Tekken 2 and 3, it's insane. These move lists are also much more than just fresh coats of paint over universal maneuvers. Every character has a bevy of unique options that quite significantly change how they play. As an example, the lead character, Kidin, has a well-rounded kit with a number of tools built around classic basketball misdirection tactics, including the ability to fake the direction of his cut-in, the very uncommon ability to cut in from a push, and even two kinds of YOLO three-pointer shots, which is absolutely the basketball version of a wake-up DP. By comparison, Kidin's rival, Don, has a move list based primarily around kicks, giving him the ability to charge and steal from ranges other characters can't, making him a more defense-oriented character. It gets even more interesting. 
actual Monkey Man Mande is built pretty much entirely around his monkey jump technique, which allows him to jump off his opponent and go for a dunk. In a similar vein, Luca, who I'm pretty sure is a literal angel, is focused on his unique flight stance, which allows him to almost completely ignore his opponent as he zooms overhead and towards the hoop. However, both of these characters have the unique weakness of being able to very practically violate the traveling rule, making them immediately give up possession of the ball if they use their unique movement options in the wrong place or at the wrong time. There's actually a huge variety of surprisingly divergent tools across the cast here. For every character built around misdirection, there's another built around clear-cut movement advantages, or yet another built on aggressively blowing through their opponent. There's even a guy in here with honest-to-god catch counters on offense. It's honestly incredible seeing just how much thought went into designing all of these characters for what, nowadays, seems to be a throwaway budget title for the PlayStation that time forgot. And so, we arrive back at the question serving as the impetus for this whole discussion. Is one-on-one -on -one a fighting game? Well, if we adhere to strict genre definitions, then I suppose it's still pretty firmly a sports game. But the influence that fighting games had on this game's design is pretty clear to see. From the intimate interactions and mind games facilitated by the game's systems to the complex character moveset design, one-on-one -on -one is, in many ways, very clearly a game made in the same school as Virtua Fighter 3 and Tekken 3, wearing these inspirations on its sleeve. And that's not entirely unprecedented. While usually people think of tennis as the traditional sport most aligned with fighting games, the fighting game genre owes a surprising amount to basketball. On top of real-life one-on-one streetball requiring a pretty similar psychology to fighting games in many respects, basketball also gave us one of the most beloved characters in SNK's The King of Fighters series in Lucky Glauber. And in English-speaking parts of the globe, we even owe some of our terminology to it. The most obvious of which being cross-up, a term which in basketball refers to changing your dribbling hand to throw off your opponent's steal. So, I suppose one-on-one -on -one isn't a fighting game, but only in the same way that fighting games aren't basketball. And just as one-on-one -on -one owes no small part of its design to the popular fighting games of the time, the fighting game genre owes parts of itself to the real-life sports that came before it, basketball included. Like I said in the beginning, fighting games present the footsies dynamic, something common to just about every competitive game, with a remarkably small level of abstraction, which makes fighting game players well primed to identify and catch on to these dynamics in other competitive games, and putting that into words is often as illuminating as it is humorous. So does playing fighting games make you good at basketball? I don't know. Try playing one-on-one -on -one and see for yourself.